Um, I believe a sneakerhead is just anyone that's really into shoes that kind of goes out of their way to get shoes. Um, <laughs> I believe I'm a sneakerhead. A sneakerhead, I would say, in my opinion, is a person who enjoys collecting sneakers and buying sneakers, not a person who actually buys them just to resell them. Right. A sneakerhead is basically somebody who just loves sneakers. They love everything about it, the nostalgia about the pairs that they couldn't get when they were a baby, the pairs that they want for the future, all the hyped up pairs, the pairs that they just, just downright just love, they'll pay anything for. Somebody who just all around just loves every kind of different pair of sneakers. They're not specific to Jordans, Nikes, it doesn't matter. They just love sneakers. They just love looking good from the feet up. I wouldn't say I'm a sneakerhead anymore. I used to be, but now it's more business for me. I've been into it for like five years now, and I just like buying shoes. Uh, I like being able to make money off of buying shoes, and it just has kept me busy, so it's like also a hobby as well. So. Um, to answer your question, a sneakerhead is anyone that's really into shoes and has a passion for the culture and everything like that. I mean, I don't know if it's a love at this point, but I mean, it's a love-hate because I hate having to get them and I love, I love just having them, so it's kind of weird. It's like a weird relationship, but I mean, I love sneakers because keeps me busy, keeps me stimulated, um, and I just like the buying, selling, trading aspect of it the most. Well, sneakers to me, it means more than just like the money. I mean, to more of it like getting to know it, like, you know, as if it was like a class, like learning about the shoe, how was it made, like, you know, who wore it, who's the collaboration by. You know, when somebody's walking by, you just seeing some shoes, like, wow, we got those, so, you know, it starts a conversation and everything, so, that's like a high level. Let's say, for example, there's a shoe that's coming out and you're trying to make money. You see if it goes for a lot of money or not, and then you try to see if there's resale on the shoe, and then you purchase the shoe, and then you sell it for the most money you can make. So you should get money in your pocket over how much you pay for the shoe. Hype is like something that's like flashy, something that stands out. Like, you know, not the ordinary, like a BMW, Maserati, Ferrari, all that. Not like the plain stuff. High piece. High piece is about all about the clothing, supreme, babe. Uh, sometimes designer clothes and sneakerheads, they mostly go for sneakers, you know. Sometimes they go for supreme, but they wouldn't go for crazy. The high piece, they're only there for the hype. Like for collaborations, like Supreme with Nike or like Supreme with um, with like CDG, all those other brands. They they go for that mostly. And they kind of they would not really ruin the game. But they make it harder for people to get things that they want. People would actually, would actually wear it. Alright, let's say we're both walking down the street, right? And you see somebody wear a pair of bread ones. And you like the bread ones. And you're like, oh, I want to buy a pair. I like them. And then your friend over here, he's like, I want to buy a pair because they're up on StockX for 300 See, that's the difference between a sneakerhead and a hype beast, in my opinion, right? Sneaker community, don't get me wrong, it's not all perfect. You do have your hype bees, your haters the tagalongs, the people that have been in the community for the longest, like thieves. I, the thieves. <laughs> There's something about the culture and history. Like if you look back into the 1990s, in the hip hop community, let's say in the ghetto too, in rich neighborhoods, everybody wanted the new pair of Jordans that came out. Everybody wanted the new pair of Nikes that came out. So it's all about the culture and all, right, all of us were in here for one thing, to make money. Of what? Of this, of sneakers, you know? The sneaker community is kind of rough. There's a lot of sharp people, like a lot of people just, they come and try to attack each other basically. And it's a big undercut market, but I mean, overall you meet a lot of good people, a lot of nice people, a lot of fun people, a lot of people who just all around love sneakers just like you. I love sneakers because I just grew up not having many of them. So once I started working hard, I was able to, you know, get sneakers like Yeezys, Jordans, and stuff like that. So for me, it was the fact that I always wanted sneakers, but I could never afford them. So that's why it personally means a lot to me when I wear like Yeezys or something like that. Personally, the reason I like sneakers is because my feet don't change. So I'm always a size 12. But see, I'm always my weight is always up and down, so I gotta buy new clothes all the time to fit my weight. But my shoes stay the same, so I like my sneakers. Well, that was the first one I went to SneakerCon in New York City, so it was a little overwhelming because there's a lot of people there and some of the prices were like ridiculous, but I got into it because 
you know, I saw how they were making money, so that's why I'm doing it, to make a few extra bucks. I feel like a lot of companies are trying to make more quantity to make everyone be able to get it, but then some companies are still trying to make everything very limited. So, it's just, you know, I guess it depends on the brand, you know. I feel like Jordan's gonna come up again, because Jordan went down a lot. But I definitely think Jordan, Nike, they're gonna make a big come up again. Our first show was actually sneaker con, so that was eventful. Uh, it was a large crowd, a lot of sneakers, everyone had shoes on their heads and it was just fun. It was amazing to see the whole sneaker community just ready to, to sell sneakers and just enjoying the moment. The future for the sneaker community seems pretty bleak with all the bots out here. <laughs> I don't know, man. I can't. I took so many L's this year trying to get a pair of sneakers, so I, I don't know, man. The sneaker community, I think more individuals are going to create their own sneakers, and I think that's where it's going to go, where individuals are going to start creating their own sneakers just because they don't like what's happening in the moment. <laughs> I got scanned this week. I'm sorry to hear. I don't know, some kid, some kid from around here from New York. I was trying to get some off whites off him. And it's cut. It was in a it was in a, a sneaker group. Not a local sneaker group that I usually do. It was the one I just entered. And I mean I legit checked him and all that. Everything turned out. Everything seemed good. You know what I mean? We FaceTime, we talk, you know what I mean? So I mean it was my fault. It was my fault, regular. Right? I shouldn't have just sent the money, but I sent the money and he ran off. All right, well, my brand is Big Apple Customs, and what I do is I customize any leather goods, any items, so it ranges from sneakers to jackets, wallets, purses, anything. Basically, it brings the unique ability of people being different into being able to have still trendy, fashionable sneakers. So it's like, it comes by and pe it comes by, it combines people who love art and sneakers together. How do you interact with others in the community? Robert Bird's life by step with light skin tone. Yo.